was so moved by the example of, of Comrade Nestor Macno that I, I, I grew a similar moustache. <laughs> and um, I've written uh, a light West End musical. <laughs> and in the first act, in the first act, Nestor Macno comes walking into his hometown of Hulier Polier, his moustaches smelling faintly of gunpowder and death. He's just fresh from slaughtering 75 running dogs of the Tsar's Imperial White Army. And after a light lunch, egg mayonnaise sandwich, glass of milk, apple, he's off to uh, liberate 14,000 acres of prime arable land and redistribute it amongst the grateful peasantry. Poulier, Poulier's favourite son, brush moustache and a Tommy gun. As Ukrainian peasant revolutionary leaders of the early 20th century go, you're my number one. <laughs> I'm still working on this. It's the art, the art of the poet. Still got to work on these things. Work on the scansion. And in the second act, it's now moved forward to 19, 1921 and the Bolsheviks are now the main anti macnovist aggressor. And, uh, and we find comrade Nestor Makhno and a few of his trusted lieutenants are trying to slip into the clothing of Ukrainian peasant girls. The better to... Uh, to infiltrate behind the enemy lines. And, and Comrade Macno is really trying really hard to concentrate on counting out rounds of ammunition. But he can't help but notice just, just how nice the sort of soft, closely woven linen of the undergarments feels against his, <laughs> his rough, battle-hardened soldier's skin. And just for a moment, just for a moment, it, it crosses his mind, Christ, it'd be absolutely lovely to be a lady. And he turns, he turns on his newly commandeered heels and he marches up and down the lengths of his ragtag army, gazing into the eyes of his men, making sure that, making sure that no one has got a fucking problem with that. <laughs>